friends, welcome back to my channel. Sass here. I'm here to do a review of Abducted in Plain Sight. It is a Netflix original documentary. Uh, one of my subscribers asked me to give it a look, and if I liked it, I would review it, and I liked it, and I'm reviewing it. Now, I'm not going to tell you every little, little thing about it because I want you to go and watch it for yourself. Trust me, you need to watch it, okay? But I am going to give you the um, highlights of this documentary. Y'all, when I tell you the foolery that goes down in this, in this documentary, I just cannot believe it. I just, I was shocked by some of the stuff that happened, and you would be too. I got my notes, okay? I had to take notes. Um, so, let's get into it. Alright, so this took place in the 70s. I believe it was around 1974, 73-74. And it takes place in Pocatelli, Idaho. Alright. By the name, you should know that it is a small town, okay? Everybody knows your name, okay? You know, they all probably went to the same church, you know? Everybody looked like that and not like this. So, there's a family called the Brobergs, Mary and Bob. They have three children, three girls. And it's just a traditional family. He owns a store in town. You know, the kids are well behaved. You know, just a, a traditional cookie cutter. You know, they didn't lock their doors at night kind of town. All right? Very sweet family. So they're in church one day. And they come across another family. The Burchos. Robert Burcho is married. He has five children. Of course, the Brobergs becomes friends with uh, Burcho's family. Um, the kids become friends. You know, the parents become friends and they start going over each other's house and having dinner and just enjoying each other's company. Now, the wife of Robert Burcho was um, timid, shy, Plain Jane, even uh, Mary uh, Broberg was like, they just seemed like an odd couple because he was very outgoing, you know, everyone liked him, talkative, and here's his wife, who's very timid, shy, kept to herself, Plain Jane, you know, I'm sure the submissive wife cooked, clean, stayed at home, that dinner bell be on the table at 5 or 5 p.m., you know how it goes. Now, Robert, that's his name, Robert Burchold, became um, obsessed with, uh, with the Broberg's daughter, Jan. At this time, I think she was 11 years old. Um, he became very close to her. In fact, he became so close that he took it upon himself to take pictures of this girl in her nightgown. Very, very, very suggestive sexual pictures, okay? Nothing that an 11-year-old girl should be doing. Here this grown man is taking pictures of her. Other of his girl, Mary Brosberg, she was like, you know, he had this, um, he instantly took to Jan. And he had this odd, um, weird, um, fixation on her and I thought it was odd myself now that's the mother of the daughter saying this okay so time went on all right so Robert let's just not call him by his name let's call him the predator okay the predator went over to the Broberg's house and was like listen I want to take your daughter, your 11-year-old daughter, Jan, horseback riding. So the mother was like, well, I'm not sure if that's a very good idea. 
let's wait until, you know, Bob gets home and we'll, we'll talk about it. And so he was like, no, you know, it'll be okay. I've been wanting, you know, to take her. And so here's Jan. Jan was like, mom, you know, let me go. She was excited. She's 11 years old. It's a man who um, she felt safe with. She's been around many times. You know, she just felt like nothing is going to happen because she sees this man as a father figure. So, Mary was like, okay, I'll let you go. They broke her down. So, she says, okay, I'll let you go. She said, but you better be home before dinner. You better be home before Bob gets home. So, of course, out the, door, out the door they go. And, of course, you know, Jan, he gave her some allergy medication um, because, you know, she was going to be around horses. So, instantly, she was out. Now, before um, they go horseback riding, Let's take it back. Now, as I said before, the predator and his family became close with the Brosbergs. Okay, they were best friends. Now, while this is going on, okay, um, he started up a relationship with Mary. Okay, they became close. Mary and her husband was very plain. Um... Her husband didn't give her the attention that she needed, the affection that she needed. So, of course, the predator fed off of that. Okay? So, he got into her mind, and they got together, and they kissed. And, of course, he said sweet things in her ear, like how attractive she was, giving her all kinds of attention, and that's what she needed. Okay, she liked it, she fed it, she wanted it, and he gave it to her. But she says at this point, we just kissed, that's all we did. That's all we did, but boy, did it feel good. Okay. So, we have Bob. Okay, again, Bob. A very kind man, gullible, I would say. The whole, him and Mary, gullible. All right. So, he owned the store, and so here comes the predator into the store and says, I need to talk to you. You know, I'm having problems with my wife. You know, I am a sexual person, and my wife is not giving it to me. So, Bob was like, okay, we'll go for a ride, and we'll talk. So, they get into the car, y'all. They on the side of the road. And here comes this predator talking about, you know, me and my wife are not having sex, okay? I need sex. I mean, look at me. Okay, so the predator is beside this man, married man, father of three, in this car, with the hard on. Predator looks at Bob and says, uh, can you help me out with this? <laughs> now, what do you think Bob, the family man, did. He leans over and gives this man, Robert the Predator, a hand job. <sighs> let me let y'all marinate. I'm going to let y'all marinate on that one. Let me tell you one more time. The Predator had a hard on. And Bob, the family man, good Christian man, took his hand and gave this man a hand job. Okay, now after I seen that, I said, now something's wrong, something's wrong. But you know, Bob's explanation is he's my friend and you know, he was going through something. And you know, I'm a good man, I'm a good Christian man, I'm here to look out for my friend. Now, I don't know of any friends or any man or any woman that will go over and give somebody a hand job. Honey, Bob, that's not a Christian thing to do, sugar. <laughs> I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Now, this all happened before the horseback riding trip. Okay. So, we have Mary. 
It's 9 p.m. And of course, little Jan, she's not home yet. So the predator's wife come over. And she's like, oh my God, she's upset. And, and then these two parents, Mary and Bob, says, maybe we should call the law. <laughs> you think fools. Okay. So, of course, the predator's wife was like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Everything's fine. I'm sure they'll be home soon. Now, this was a Friday. Saturday rolls along and no call has been made to the authorities. Okay. Okay. They call a number that was associated with the FBI. So, of course, it's the weekend and they're like, if you have, you know, an emergency, call this number. Guess what they did, y'all? We don't want to bother nobody, Murray said. Okay, this is just a big misunderstanding. I'm sure any time now, they're going to walk through this door. No phone call was made. Okay. Five days has went by, y'all. Five. All right. They waited five days to actually get in contact with someone to let them know that their child is gone. Because, you know, they didn't want to bother nobody. So, the FBI get involved, and I think the FBI's agent name was Peter Welch. So, he gets involved. Of course, they had to do what they had to do. Come to find out, they spoke to the Predator's brother. He was no good. He's a shady car salesman. He owns a car lot or whatever. And even his own brother said that that the predator, um, when he was small, they knew something was wrong. This, this boy wasn't right, okay? As he got older, he always had this obsession with young girls. So the brother knew that um, something was wrong. Now, let's talk about where Jan has been this whole time. All right, so she's with the predator, and the predator had drugged her and took her. He had this um, RV. He took her to Mexico, and when she come to, of course, you know, she didn't know where she was at, you know, who she was with. She's 11 years old. And so this recording comes on, and it was very distorted and um, sounded weird to her, alienish. And so this recording come on and said that their names was Zeta and Zethron, and they was from another planet. They were aliens. Now this is what she's hearing in this RV. So of course, being an 11 year old girl, you know, thinking, what is going on here? The aliens informed her that she has a mission. Okay, she has a mission to please Robert the Predator. Whatever he says goes. That's your mission. Now, if you do not complete this mission, now this is all a tape recorder. She's listening to this from aliens. Zella and Zethron. If she did not complete this mission, okay, um, they will kill her family. You know, hurt her sisters. Okay? Do you understand what I'm giving you? Did you do you hear what I'm saying? So here comes Robert the Predator. And he's like, of course, of course, Jan. You you have to do this. You love your family, don't you? You want them protected, don't you? You don't want anything bad to happen to them, do you? Okay, then you're going to have to finish this mission. 11-year-old girl, this grown, disgusting, pedophilia man is brainwashing her into thinking that aliens is telling her to do this, to sleep with this grown man, and that's exactly what she does. He took full advantage of this situation. And he raped her over and over and over again. You know, she thought, hey, I'm completing this mission. 
okay? I feel safe with this man. This is a man that has been in my house many of times. I see him as a father figure. Um, I feel safe with him. Of course I would carry out this mission as long as my family is safe. Okay. So the FBI is still looking for Jan and Robert the Predator. So they find the car and it appeared that, you know, it was broken into, there was blood, and it made it look, he made it look like that they were both kidnapped. But the FBI was hip to that child. The FBI was like, I don't know who you think I am. I was born at night, not last night. So they knew all along that uh, Robert the Predator had this girl. So his no good brother snitched, okay? He told it. They found out that he was in Mexico. They go to Mexico. They finally bring Jan home. Man, did I write down how long she was there? Damn, I didn't. Um, I can't remember how long she was with the Predator. Um, but anyway, she gets home. And before she gets home, so Bob the Predator is in Mexican jail. And he bribed one of the guards to have Jan come down to see him. And so she, so he could talk to her and manipulate her even more. So, of course, he tells this 11-year-old girl, don't say nothing. I, I talked to the aliens. And they said, if you say anything, your family will get hurt. Don't say a word. So, of course, being an 11-year-old girl, she didn't say a word. Her family was notified, and they reunited, and of course, standoffish to her dad, because Robert the Predator and the aliens was telling her, you know, don't be around, don't trust any other men, especially your father, you know, you don't want no harm coming to him, you know, so they have embedded this in her head, that no men are any good, especially your dad, so, you know, she was standoffish with him, so she returns home, okay. And she is, of course, changed. Here's a girl who is keeping a secret. You know, she's keeping a secret of aliens, you know, and how she can't say anything or they will be harmed. So, of course, she is acting out. She is uh, withdrawn. She's just not talking. And, of course, everybody in the family sees it, sees this. So... Christmas Eve. Here comes that no good wife. You know, Miss, you know, Minnie Mouse comes over to Mary and Bob's house and says, I need to talk to Bob. All right. So Bob was like, what's up? And so she was like, look, okay. All this needs to go away. All right. My husband's in jail, but you're going to get him out. All right. You are going to sign these papers to release him. And if you don't, we're going to tell everybody about y'all's secrets. We are going to tell all of y'all's dirty laundry. Honey, out the door she went. So, of course, the horror, you know. Mary and Bob can't have that. You know, they can't have the townspeople know that, um, you know, what's been going on. The predator's lawyers made up this, you know, these papers, and Mary and Bob signs them. Okay? Signs these papers that, you know, they was aware of where their daughter was for five days, that the predator had not kidnapped their daughter. He needs to be released. It was mind-boggling. So he gets out. Okay? He gets out of jail. Now, the FBI agent is fed up. He's like, now listen here, now listen here. I don't want you nowhere near this family, the Predator's family. I don't want you near, I don't want him near your children. I don't want him near your house, your dog, your cat, your mailbox, your car, your yard. I don't want him nowhere near you. Guess what happened, y'all? <laughs> Can you guess what happened? Not only did they continue to see this man, even after he has kidnapped their child, she, Mary, starts having an affair with him. 
Marinate on that. Marinate for eight months. Keep going. Marinate on it. After this disgusting man has had their daughter for I don't know how long. She starts, well, she has, she continues to have this affair with him for eight months. Now, meanwhile, Jan is going through her own issues because, you know, here she is, you know, still thinking about the aliens, still thinking about her family, safety, and, you know, all this, you know, so she's worried, she's going through puberty, and just, she has really, really fallen in love with the predator. Okay, so, okay, now, while... Mary was having this affair with this monster for eight months. He was climbing in bed with Jan all this time. Eve came over Christmas Eve and wanted them to sign their um, life away. Um... Well, you don't hear nothing else about his wife or his five children. I don't know if he left them or I don't know. But you don't hear anything else about them. So time went on and he ends up in Wyoming. Okay, he opened up this water park, theme park, and he still is in contact with Jan. Jan is still going through her emotional issues. She's still traumatized by all this and... It was just a hot mess. So, she goes to her mother and says, look, okay, the predator is in Wyoming. He's an open up a theme park. I want to go. I guess Jan is probably around 12 or 13 at this time. And she's been kidnapped by this sexual predator. She still have not told anybody about what he had done to her. But it, it, it don't take a genius. Okay, so she's still holding this in. She is being rebellious. She is making their life crap. You know, she's screaming. She's yelling. She's not behaving. She's not listening. She's just too done. Okay, so she goes to her mother who has been sleeping with this man. Okay, after the FBI agent said, listen, don't you go nowhere near this animal. Don't you do it. In one ear and out the other. So Jan goes to her mother and says, you know what? Okay. I need to see this man. Okay. I need to see him. So. <laughs> she goes to Bob. And was like, well, you know what, Bob? Jan, she wants to go and see the predator. What should we do? And he's like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So Jan tells her mom, tells her mom, says, look, either I, I'm gone, whether you like it or not, a 12-year-old, I'm going. What do you think the mom did? The mom puts her on a plane. <laughs> did y'all hear what I said? The mom puts her child on a plane to go work for the predator. She stayed in Wyoming with this man for two weeks, y'all. <sighs> two weeks she stayed with this man. I could, I, I, honey, at that point, I almost tossed my television out the window. I said, nah, uh no way. They are this gullible. So, Papa Bob had enough. So he served um, Mary some divorce papers and said, I've I done had it. It is done. I'm tired of this. And so it, a lot had happened in between. And um, the predator, you know, had made his way back. He was like going back and forth between Utah and Idaho and then Wyoming. It was just a whole bunch of mess. So she was like, I can't lose my family over you. So she goes to him and she's like, listen, okay, um, 
I can't do this. We we gonna have to cut ties. And so he was like, you sure you want to do this? And so she was like, I'm done. Stay away from my family. Stay away from my daughter. And of course he was like, and that ain't going to happen. <laughs> She's wrapped around this. I got her right where I got her. So she goes to her husband, Bob, and she's like, I made a huge mistake. I love you. You know, and she told him all about the affair and, you know, all this stuff. So, of course, Jan, you know, she's not got a little bit older. Okay. So, Jan's still carrying on this burden. She's still thinking that, you know, there's aliens and, you know, she has to complete this mission and all this stuff. He has really brainwashed her. Okay. So, she runs away. She runs away from home. Okay. Guess where she goes? She goes to be with the predator. Now, this whole time, you know, the predator is saying, I don't know where she's at, but I'm in contact with her. You know, she's saying that she's fine. You know, I just hope she's not prostituting or doing drugs. I just don't know. Now, this whole time, she was with the predator. Okay, so the FBI, Peter Welch, is still involved. And he's like, listen, he ain't nothing but a liar. Okay, so Mary and Bob contacted the FBI, of course, and they put a trace on um, their phone. Y'all, when I tell you these conversations, I want, I want to tell you how the conversations went, and I am not exaggerating. Now, mind you, their daughter has run away. I think at this time she was like 13 or 14, has run away and is with this predator. Okay. Now, the predator is calling, you know, Mary and Bob often. And here's Mary, the Bruce Spurs residence. Hello, Mary. This is Robert. Hi, Robert. How are you? And so he's like, um, well, you know, I'm fine. How are you? Well, I'm not too good, cheerio. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I'm not too good. I'm worried. You know, have you heard from her? <laughs> oh my god I was so frustrated and mad at these phone conversations that I almost tossed myself out my window I could not believe that this woman is carrying on this conversation with this predator so calm so calm not one time did she raise her voice not once shock I was shocked. So, long story short, they got, um, they caught the predator and Jan came home again. Okay, again. He was acquitted of kidnapping, um, impersonating a CIA agent, um, and something else I cannot remember. So, the judge sentenced him to a mental facility. Instead of going to prison, he went to a mental facility. Now, at this point, Jan is 16 years old, living a normal life. She's a 16-year-old girl, and she wanted to go to some drama camp at Brigham Young University. Now, mind you, this whole time, okay, she hasn't told anyone about the sexual assaults, about the aliens, about her mission. So something happened um, while she was at Brigham Young and her birthday um, was coming up. She was going to turn 16. And you know, the aliens had told her that she needed to become impregnated at 16 and all this stuff. So she was like, oh my God, I'm not pregnant. You know, they're going to hurt my sister or I'm going to have to turn over my sister to these aliens and she's going to have to do the same thing, live in the same thing I've been living. So on her 16th birthday, she was going to go home and blow her head off. So she woke up. She was fine. You know, she wasn't pregnant because um, <clears throat> the aliens was going to impregnate her. 
And she wasn't pregnant. She was fine. And she finally got it. Okay. She finally realized that something was wrong. There was no aliens. She finally told her sister and her best friend. Her parents finally knew. la di di la di da Okay. Now, she went on, um, as she got older, her and her mother went and spoke at different universities and um, passed this um, bill, and she uh, went face-to-face -face with um, the predator. He was all old and disheveled, still arrogant, and she wrote books, and I'm not going to tell you what happened at the end. I'm going to let you um, watch it, and you'll see what happened. But it was a very good documentary. I um, hope you take a look at it. It's worth the watch. Sorry if I was all over the place. I didn't want to give you too, too much. I just wanted to hit the hot spots. Okay? Let me know what you think. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends, bye.